Hello everyone, welcome to Wednesday on Rose and Carter, do the JRV. Um, Bully Boy's show pick today, and he's chosen uh, the World Wrestling Council from Puerto Rico. Um, I've always loved Puerto Rican, you know, the style there. But I love, I'm so hypocritical, I suppose. I love, um, I, lo I love your smooth wrestling of your Brad Armstrong types. But I love how rough Puerto Rico is. You know, and how rough the, the, the style is. Yeah. There's not a lot like it, is there? No, but that, that's, that's the beauty of, like, doing what we do on these uh, territory podcasts, is you could go, you could be in fucking Texas one day, and then, like, somewhere in Europe the next, and it's like you just, everywhere is, like, different. When you look at the territories and that, they all have their own kind of individuality, don't they? And It's, it's kind of a lost art now, because wrestling isn't different no matter where you go. No, but it's not. The place that has kept its sort of heritage is the Mexicans. You know, they've still got the lucha stuff going on and the mass and, the, you know, that their rules and their style. Um, but everywhere else has become that, you know, on the whole, that sort of typical NXT, AEW, bloody flippy style, and every show becomes the same. It is. That's... Uh, Wrestling's that's, lost its identity in different places, isn't it? That's why, like... Um, even like if you go to like places around the UK, um, you could go to like you know I don't want to shit on anyone, but you could go to one promotion somewhere and then travel three hundred miles and go to another one, and it's exactly the same because they, for one, it's not just the styles that's the same; it's the the people they have on are the same because they use a lot of the same people. So there isn't really a an identity like it's really difficult that's why like when i started running shows and i guess you do the same thing as well it's like you try to kind of replicate some of the old like character type oh, like, rather than be similar to everywhere else for me it took a while to find my promotion's identity i think you know i i tried to fit in at one point and do the more you know inverted commas modern wrestling that I found I didn't enjoy watching it. I mean, years before that, I wanted to bring back British wrestling, you know, and to a degree, I guess we still do because we have the odd rounds thing now and again. But I, I love the Southern style more than anyone else, and that's what I've stuck to. Um, yeah. But you know, it took me years to decide that was the direction to go in after deciding not to conform with everybody else. Yeah. You know, and, but there'll always be people shitting on it. You know, there'll always be their um, anti Jim Cornette type saying that you've got to move on. There'll always be your Jeff Hardys, wouldn't there? But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know it's, um, it's been around a long time, this uh, World Wrestling Council. Uh, started in 1973. So, what's that, 47 years? 40, yeah, 47 years, September 1973. Um, yeah, so a fair while, isn't it? Um, known as Capital Sports Promotions. Uh, I've, WWF was Capital Sports as well, is it not? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. Um, but Gorilla Monsoon was involved, you see. Gorilla left in 88. But then, then they sort of rebranded it then, not long after, into the World Wrestling Council, you know, without the Capital Sports and stuff. Um, Carlos Stallone and Gorilla sort of ran it together for the majority of the time even though Gorilla would have been in and out of the WWF it was still NWA affiliated until 1987 which seems really odd doesn't it you know that Gorilla Monsoon was associated with an NWA promotion while still working with the WWF but you know, uh, was Gorilla actually involved or was he just, you know, taking a cut of the money? Who knows? I do, yeah. Um, during the mid-80s was the, the pinnacle, apparently, according to Wikipedia, of their success, with wrestlers earning between three and five grand a week. And that's in such a small territory, really, Puerto Rico. Mm. You know, ideal, isn't it? Um, 
the in eighty eight Brody dying there, you know, the murder of Bruiser Brody, which is you know well documented. Don't think that helped business because it kind of declined after that. In the nineties, it was rebranded. Um, between two thousand and two thousand and six, they were sort of fighting another promotion in the same area, the IWA. But the IWA was affiliated with the WWF, Victor Quinones' promotion. Um, so they obviously had the WWF people coming in, which didn't really help when Carlos would have just had, you know, his own local boys. Uh, 2019, um, Eddie and Orlando Cologne, who were still under WWE contract, worked in the office and as in-ring talent for the Royal Wrestling Council, which is a rare, you know, a rare thing, isn't it? Um, but in 2020, the Royal Wrestling Council started working with the IWA. I suppose if you can't beat them, join them kind of thing. Right, yeah. Um, you know, and that's kind of still going on now, I believe. Uh, Championships-wise, they've got the Universal Championship, which is their top one that started in 1982. Carlos Glones had that 26 times. The heaviest champion was Mabel, and the first champion was Abdullah the Butcher. Puerto Rican Championship uh, started in 74. Invader number ones had that 12 times. The Tag Team Championship started in 77. The Kangaroos were the first, and the Funk Brothers were the longest reigning champions at 860 days. TV title started in 86. Um, Ron Starr was the first champion of the longest champion. 435 days was Sean Morley, who's Val Venus. Mm -hmm. um, the junior champion started in 74. Les Thornton's the longest champion there, 471 days. I mean, you can tell from just, just the champions, sort of fact list, they've had some big names there. You know, Mabel, the heaviest universal champion. Abdullah, Carlos, obviously, he's... he's you know, the promoter, but the Kangaroos, the Funks, Ron Starr, Val Venus, Les Thornton, that's just the, the facts without the in-betweeny bits. So, you know, big names have passed through there. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, it's kind of a who's who of wrestling. They have the anniversary show. I've seen several of, like, once a year, and, I've you know, I've seen Demolition and Ronnie Garvin and Iron Sheik and Tony Atlas, and, you know, several big names in there. Dino Bravo. Um, and I think I gave you the DVD of that hot night in somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hell of a show, isn't it? Um, the one yeah, I that's, watched, that's on YouTube, isn't it? That, that show. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Um, the one I watched was from 91, so not really during their peak. It's yeah. still the same. Still the same rough ass style. You said before we started recording, you did like three matches. Is it three matches you did? Yeah, I did uh, three different matches because the the episodes I've seen were like foreign. So I had like an issue if they don't fucking say the name on the screen and it's a wrestler I'm unfamiliar with. I'm not going to know who the fuck I'm talking about, am I? So I decided so, to just. The beauty I had was it told me who was who on the on the comments like. So, you are. Um, the, the beauty I had was that in the comment, you know, in the in the little description bit, it told me what was yeah. what. So that uh, I didn't really like. I didn't know everybody. There was one name that I'd never heard of, or you know, at least the ones I hadn't seen, I'd kind of heard of. But one was a little confused. Shall I do mine first? Simply, I'll tell you for why. Because yours will be better. <laughs> because you think <laughs> so. Um, at least we could end on a high if you're doing yours. Afterwards. Well, I've got fucking three different years. Like, I've got 86, 91, and 92 are the three right. years I've got. So, but yeah, you can do yours first if you want, though. Right. I, I did this one. And the only reason I chose this one is because it was the closest date to today that I could find. It was from right. yesterday, 91, in essence. So what's right. that? For 30 years, 30 years ago yesterday was when this was first shown, 4th of May, 1991. 
Um, there was a dude at the start hosting it on his own. Um, it's it's all in Spanish, so I don't, you know, excuse the ignorance. Didn't do didn't do the language at school. No fucking idea what's going on. I pick up the odd word, like you know, clothesline or Scott Hall. You know, I pick up that. Um, but what they're, what they're talking about, fuck knows. Um, but he goes on for five minutes and thirty seconds, jabbering on. He literally doesn't stop for breath. Um, he's very excitable, man. But yeah, I was five minutes and thirty seconds in until we went to any sort of ring. Um, the first bit is a look back. When I don't know, it could have been last month, last year, fuck knows when. Yesterday, um, but it was a look back at a, a G that happened between Action Jackson, who is, you know, I know of from Texas, still going now. I saw him a couple of weeks ago on a show in Dallas. SWE show. Action Jackson, who has a um, a mass manager man with him, who sort of speaking Spanish on his behalf because Jackson's from Dallas, and they're shouting at another mass man. Well, the, ma- the, the mass manager is shouting at the other mass man, um, who turns out to be Medico number three. Um, it, there's, they, they do the shouting and the arguing. There's a lot of pointing going on. You know, all, all parties are fucking angry. Um, and then they show you the end of the match. Um, the end of the match is... Um, Right, okay, I've got it. The end of the match is the ref gets bumped. It literally right. starts that the bit of the action with the referee taking the bump. So I don't know how he got bumped or what you know, whether he got clipped with the feet or what. Medico right. goes cross bodies, but the referee doesn't see it. So the referee's on on action Jackson. Referee's dead, he don't see it. Um the referee turns round, starts to count, but bear in mind he's been down now for like 15 seconds. Action Jackson kicks out. And then he small packages the other dude and Action Jackson wins. Now, I understand the fucking angry because he missed the pin. But unless he was purposely bumped the referee, then Action Jackson's won clean, any? he? Because hmm. he just small packaged him. So I don't know whether, like, you know, the, ref- the referee was purposely bumped by Action Jackson or what, but for, uh, you know, I, I didn't quite understand that finish. Anyway, the rematch is on now. Um, pretty good shit, this, to be fair. It wasn't on for long, but it was good shit. Um, Action Jackson, straight in the ring. He, he's attacking Super Medico number three, who's got a bout, by the way. What bout? I don't know, but he's got a bout. Super Medico three has. Action Jackson gets hip tossed, slammed, and sunset flipped. Um, Super Medico is all over him. Fucking big backdrop. There's some punches exchanged and Action Jackson goes to the eyeballs. Uh, the masked man is going apeshit next to the ring, the, the manager dude. Uh, the boots are up by uh, Super Medico in the corner. There's a middle rope clothesline. Um, the commentator is literally having a fucking baby. He's that excited. I don't know what he's saying, but he's fucking... Honestly, I'm surprised he didn't have a stroke or his veins burst in his head or something. The only thing that I, I said at the start, and I, I picked up a few words, but one of the words that I did hear him say was Scott Hall. You know, I know right. he was in Rico, you know, early on in his days, right? So um, what they're talking about, Scott Hall, oh, fuck knows. Um, anyway, Super Medico um, does, you know, like when you run to the corner, you jump to the middle and crossbody. Yeah. Now, he tries that on Action Jackson. Action Jackson's out of the way as Super Medico cross bodies the ref. Right, okay. The referee fucking takes the bump and sort of pops off. There's a waist lock roll up on Action Jackson from Super Medico. Obviously, he's winning again. Same story as before. In comes the mask manager man. He puts a, a gimmick in his mask and head butts him. Bow. Um, Action Jackson's over there and he was winning the bow. He runs off right quick with the mask man. He's fucked off. Out now comes Kim Duck. Do you remember Tiger Chung Lee? Yeah. Him. It was a baby face. Never seen him as a baby face before. Um, you know, in the WWF, he's always a villain, wasn't he? Um, 
I've always enjoyed him in the WWF, though, Tiger Chung Lee. But yeah, he's kind um, out he comes and he's explaining to the ref what happened. Um, I guess because there's lots of this going on, and uh, you know the Super Medico is going right. So they they're getting on, they're friends. That makes me think he's a baby face, right? Uh, Action Jackson now comes back to the ring and starts beefing with Kim Duck. They take the belt off Action Jackson, give it back to the masked man. He's still got the title. Lovely jubbly. Then there's a promo with Super Medico with the belt. Um, what Super Medico says, I don't, couldn't tell you. But they shake hands, Kim Duck and Super Medico. Happy days. Now there's a promo on the phone with um, Ronnie Garvin. Ronnie Garvin. French Canadian, but I can just about understand what he says. Only just though, it's it's almost as bad as the Spanish. Fucking <laughs> Garvin's on about how he's a villain here, Ronnie Garvin. He's talking about how um, tough he is and that he, everything that he does in life is better than Carlos Colon. He says, you know, I'm a, I'm a better wrestler, I'm a better dancer, I'm a better lover. Like he's got some charisma, Ronnie Garvin. Like. As a baby face, he, 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 was, he was just a wrestler to me, Ronnie Garvin. Great one, don't get me wrong. But he was fucking, you know, he's proper, he was rapping on that fucking phone interview. Really good. Then there's a Carlos Cologne interview, which what can be described as a, a being in his garden. Um, just talking about Ronnie Garvin, I guess, because I heard him say Ronnie Garvin. Uh, there's an ad then for an upcoming show that advertises the minis. Um, the dudes that were seen at was it Royal Rumble '97? Oh yeah, it was them dudes in the advert. All right, okay. Um, Ronnie Garvin and the Simone SWAT team, which would have been just before they went to the WWF. When they it's May '91, they were there for '92, weren't they? I think. Right. Don't remember. Were they? Yeah, Go up here. Couldn't have been far off, anyway. Um, after that advert, there's highlights of Ronnie Garvin versus the Invader number three. Only brief highlights. There's a like head scissors exchanged. Ronnie Garvin sort of turns his way out of it into a choke. There's a butterfly suplex um, from Ronnie Garvin. He chops the fuck out of the Invader, peels him out of the corner. Um, there's um, a drop kick from the Invader. Off the ropes goes, uh, he attempts to throw Garvin off the ropes, which is reversed. Off goes the invader. He leaps over Ronnie Garvin. As he comes back, Ronnie Garvin just fucking punches him in the chops for the win. Um, Looked like he knocked his fucking jaw off, to be fair. Uh, Then we have Action Jackson promo, who is actually from Dallas, so we can understand this one. He's got mad beef with Kim Duck saying the title was his. It's only because of you getting in the way, blah, blah, blah. You know, understandable. Then there's a promo with Skandar Akbar. Love Skandar Akbar. He's talking about this fella that's come in called King Kong. Um, They show a brief video during the promo, and it's the dude. Do you remember the Colossal Kongs from WCW? The big fat fuckers with the black masks on, the tag team. I think Harley, I remember. They were. Harley Race managed them. Oh, it rings a bell, but I'm not really yeah, familiar. Really, this time. Um, really fucking big dude. I, I think it was like Awesome Kong and something else Kong, or, you know, two big motherfuckers anyway. It's one of them. Uh, match number three, which I don't think is fucking... I don't know who was booking this, but it's fucked up. That finish in the first match, you know, with the the, the look back was a bit fucked up. This what, what, match, what, year, what year is this again, you say? 91. Yeah, all right, because uh, there's a weird finish, and I've got one in 92, and uh, there's a really weird, an odd finish in that one as well. well like, uh, I mean, it's, it's not the, necessarily the finish of this that doesn't make sense, but the booking of it. Like, this is that King Kong dude who is fresh to the promotion, right? So you'll want to put him over big because he's £400 and, you know, Akbar's managing him, so he's clearly going to be doing something pretty big, right? 
But he was wrestling Kim Duck. Now, Kim Duck is clearly in an angle now with Action Jackson. And basically, Kim Duck, Duck just fuck, does the job to him, like, which kind of demoralizes Kim Duck, doesn't it? Mm. You know? But, like, Kim Duck's all over the fat man at the start. Uh, it's, it's all punches and kicks and nothing else. But um, King, King Kong's just being Vader, pretty much, um, and a splash to win. But it, it doesn't do Kim Duck any good. I mean, it's not going to hurt him because he lost to a 400 pound man. But with being such a big angle, with the champion involved, the Super Medico being the champion of something, it just didn't make any sense. Any old road up. Um, Brad Anderson is in the promo position next. He's after Ricky Santana. Don't know what the beef is there, but he doesn't like Ricky Santana. Um, Anderson is wrestling now against Al Casario. I'm not aware of this man, but he's a he's a young looking chap in trunks and a black mask. Um, the mask manager from the first match is with Brad Anderson. Um, Brad straight on the attack, fucking knocking piss out of this other dude. Um, reverse the whip, and this Casario is flying all over the shop, literally fucking bish bash boshing him. Um, he tries across. This is a fuck up, to be fair. It's Al Casario tries a cross body, but he goes that fucking high, like literally over. Brad don't bend or nothing. He, he like tries to do the catch for the bump, but he goes right. that high, but he ends up pretty much getting fucking back. You know, he back drops himself over the top of Brad Anderson, like because the fucking cross body went too far. Um, Brad Anderson does this slingshot thing on the bottom rope. I always like that, you know, the fucking boing and the fucking choke on the bottom rope. I do like that. Um, yeah. then, then drops him on the top rope. There's an international at this point, but it's the fucking slowest one ever. I mean, it's one of mine. It's fucking, it's, it's fucking walking through it. It's a training session international. Um, as the mass man comes back, spine buster for Brad Anderson to win. Um, there's a, a music video next with uh, a dude called the Giant Warrior who's got the Ultimate Warrior's face and arm tassels and the Barbarian's tights on and um, the Berserker's boots. So he's like, you know when you used to draw pictures and then fold it over and then someone else would draw the next bit? Right, yeah. <laughs> it's like that. You know, they've drawn Ultimate Warrior's head, uh, fucking generic tall man's body, Barbarian's legs and Berserker's boots. Uh, and they've come out with the Giant Warrior. The music video shows him on a bike and walking down the road in his wrestling gear. Because that's what you do, isn't it? Next up is a TNT promo. TNT would become Quang, who would become Savio Vega. This yeah. is in his house. It actually says on their description, TNT promo in his house. Um, don't know what they're on about. He looks busted up, to be fair, TNT. He doesn't look well, so maybe he got done over at some point. Um, this is the main event time now. It's tag team action. Uh, Al Bronco, who I'd not seen before, but he was very good, and Invader number one versus the State Patrol. Now, State Patrol, we know, have been Buddy Lee Parker and James Hill Wright. This is James Hill Wright and another man. In the description, it says Dudley Do Right. Now, I googled Dudley Do Right, it's a fucking cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but and Dudley Do Right is fucking rotten. Like, James Earl Wright is brilliant. The two, uh, Invader and Al Bronco, I, I mean, Invader, there. Yeah. Al Bronco was really good. Um, James Earl Wright <clears throat> starts with the Invader. Invader on the arms. They're doing sort of rockers, tags in and out real quick. Uh, James Earl Wright breaks free. Um, there's a roll up from James Earl Wright and then he tags in the other guy and it all fucking goes wrong from here. Um, I've put OG for other guy in the woods. So it's uh, other guy and Al Bronco now. Um, Bronco is in charge on the mat for a little while and fucking other guy's just not moving. He ain't fucking buying it. He's, he has no fucking idea where or what to do. Um, 
he suplexes the other guy for a two count, which looked very fucking difficult to get him up. He went out in. Um, it's very stop start. This match is, um, you know, like something will be done and then they'll leave him. But that's that's primarily because the other guy doesn't know what to do next, I suppose, isn't it? So he just kind of leaves him to it. Um, James Hill writes back in, so it gets better. Um, he's in charge for a bit on this Bronco dude. Uh, Bronco breaks free. The other guy's in again, and Bronco rolls him up. The other guy tags James Hill right. James Hill right gets hip tossed, arm dragged, and then they're back to doing the rockers in and out quick shit. James Hill right bites Bronco, and the heat's on now. Um, in the uh, state patrol corner, um, other guy, other guy, shit. Um, he he literally doesn't have a fucking clue what he's doing at all whatsoever. Like, um, Bronco, <laughs> uh, he, he does a face lock on this Bronco. But he gets tagged in during the heat. He comes in and puts the face lock on. Doesn't move. Doesn't move it. Like he stood. Ball upright, so not like he's got, he's not fucking strong stanced or anything. He's a big dude, you know what I mean? Um, he's just st- stood like bolt upright with the face like on like that, and then he tags. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to do. Help. Um, in comes, so in comes James Hill right again. Um, he's back in. There's a bit of a, a run spot which ends up in a fist to the belly from James Hill right. Um, you know. I've said this a million times to people. I don't know if any fucking listeners right, but you know them splashes in the corner. Yeah. Every wrestler does them because they can't think of anything else better to do. <laughs> I'm wrong. They're in every fucking match you see. Like, and and people that are four stone are doing them. You know, at full power. If you fucking I mean, I might be able to get away with it because it will look like I'm squishing you. But when fucking Al Trick Midgetio you know, is fucking doing it, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything, does it? But anyway, this fucking big dude does it, and he literally walks to the corner and goes Bleh, because he can't think of anything else to do. Oh, I can't shit on this fella enough. I wish I knew his name because I could publicly shame him. But I don't, so I'm shitting on nobody. Um. Bronco's had enough at this point. He's fucking... Bronco's losing his tits. Invader comes in and he's fucking... He's whipping the shit out of the other... You know, this fucking green muscly fella. Um, off the ropes. Green guy ducks his head. Um, and the finish is... It's a DDT. But... Um, other guy from State Patrol just lands on his front. He's, he landed like he'd been pedigreed. Right, okay, yeah. It looked all right, to be fair. The best thing he did was land for the finish. He got he got DDT, he'd landed like a pedigree, and that was the pin. James Hill Wright and Al, Bron- Al Bronco were brilliant. The Invader wasn't really in there a lot, so I can't judge. But if it was just James Hill Wright and Al Bronco, it'd be a fucking brilliant singles. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I, I, I'd gladly watch it again, watch more. Um, there was no, there, there was nothing groundbreaking. It was just punching people in the head. But I quite like that. Uh, yeah. And, and I know of its history. It's always been somewhere I've wanted to go because I've heard the stories of, you know, getting piss thrown on you and fucking batteries thrown at your head. But I really like that. I've <laughs> been... Puerto Rico's got some fucking crazy stories, hasn't it? Like, from many people i know that like it was one of brett art's first places he went weren't it was puerto rico like he'd only had like two matches and like they sent him to puerto rico like um because he ended up going instead of bruce because back in the day uh you're fucking on your your fucking on your ticket or whatever yeah yeah so um and bruce didn't go so it was smith and brett and he said it was horrible absolutely it was like if you were a heel over there it was fucking dangerous as fuck like um there was one thing he said where there was this one dude 
um, like a fucking karate, a karate guy. Um, he was blonde, but he was like a, a hated like heel over there. And um, he went into the top rope. Or, he went to the top rope or something, and the crowd were fucking giving him some shit. So he fucking like literally jumped into the crowd, and like fucking literally someone in the crowd fucking stabbed him like in the fucking like literally like in the front with a knife. Ended his career there and then, like literally, like. But that's just one story. Like they're fucking. I've Tracy, heard so. Tracy Smothers told me one about being there. He used to have that long red sort of, you know, like tails coat, like a vesty top, but it came down at the back. He used to have one of them. He said it was on the way to the ring in Puerto Rico, and someone set fire to the back of his jacket. But he had no idea because it was at the back, and the and the referee was like, you know, you're on fire. And he was like, yeah, thanks. You know, and fucking, <laughs> no, like, you're actually on fire. And you're like, fuck. Um, yeah, it's fucking. I went uh, on one of Sonny's shoot interviews as well. Cups of piss being thrown on him, and she'd probably like that. To be fair, I wouldn't mind that. But I'd quite gladly piss in a cup for Sonny. Don't mind. <laughs> right, here's your three. Right, okay. Well, what we'll do, we'll I'll go over mine in order the way I watched them. They're not in order from like you know the the dates or the years, but um, we'll start with the first one. The first one I watched was 1992, and it was oh. Carlos Cologne against the Warlord. All right. There we go. So, big, big names again, isn't it? Yeah. So I this like was it. like Warlord would have been in the WWF at this point and a big name as well, like, wouldn't he? Like, 92. Oh. Um, like, there's a massive crowd. They're in that fucking stadium bit that fucking, you know, they're famous for. Um, this this might be. Those anniversary ones. You are. This might have been one of those anniversary shows, you know, because they tended to bring, you know, the WBF people in, to re- especially to wrestle Carlos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, yeah. He was the Puerto Rican Jerry Lawler, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah, I reckon he was, to be fair. I mean, he was fucking, he's a god over there, isn't he, really? So... He was the fucking local like hero type thing, and um, but yeah. From Carlos Cologne to to, I haven't seen enough of him to know anything about his. I've I've seen a match with Abdullah the Butcher from Starcade '83. Right. He was in the Royal Rumble in the WWF that one time for minutes, and maybe a tag or two with Dino Bravo. But that's probably yeah. about it. Yeah. Oh, I saw a match of him and Greg Valentine. All right. What's that on? What's that from? That was from Puerto Rico. All right. Okay. Well, that's, that's probably it, you know. Mm. Nothing else springs to mind. I ain't seen that. Nothing else springs to mind. Right. This, this match, I fucking loved the match, but the finish. The finish wasn't like, it wasn't a shit finish. It was just, like, if you're thinking about it from a logical point of view, I'll explain it when I get there. I wouldn't, I don't know why they done what they done, but I'll explain it to you and see, and, and I'll, I'll get your thoughts on it. Right, okay, so basically, the start is, it's a real slow start. It's a tie-up. Carlos puts the top wrist lock on, but Warlord just overpowers him, and he takes a back bump. Um. They go to tie up again. Carlos swings under him, puts the waist lock on him. As he's got the waist lock on, Warlord just kind of fucking overpowers him and like shoots him off back kind of thing. He keeps taunting after every time he gets free, Warlord does, you know. And then uh, they, they tie up again and Warlord pushes him down like the old fucking big man thing. So a real slow start and Warlord always just basically showing he's the bigger guy, taunting after everything. Um, Warlord goes for the test of strength. Um, he offers a test of strength, and it was a perfect. This is an example of that fucking whole crowd going wild for something that he's not even done yet. He's just put his hand up in the air, and Carlos is like, "I'm not sure it's a fucking wise idea" type of thing. Crowd are loving it though. Um, finally, fucking Carlos does go for it. They just go for the one hand though, but then as he goes for the one hand, Warlord just fucking overpowers him. So he's only, he's doing it, but only like one handed. Carlos is going down like on his knees. Um, and then actually, the, then Carlos is trying to get back up, 
and then he reaches over and fucking rakes Warlord in the eyes, even though Carlos is the face, clearly. He still goes for the eyes, and uh, that gets a big pop from the crowd. Um, Carlos is on him now after the eyes. He goes like some fucking shots to the face, bites him in the head a couple of times, and fucking just, it's all punchy, like you were saying, punchy, punchy. It's like all punches from Carlos. And finally, Warlord fights back by lifting him up by the throat, you know, just like above his head like that, and throws him down. Um, hang on, Warlord. Oh, actually, no, he doesn't throw him down. What happens is he fucking, uh, he lifts him up by the throat, and Carlos again goes for the eyes, like fucking... Uh, so Carlos is kind of just on top for a little while, but then Warlord takes control again. Warlord is just giving him heat, but it is mainly punches, punches and punches. Then he bites he bites Carlos on the head this time and just beats him down. Um, Carlos tries to fight back, but ain't having any of it. Finally, Warlord puts a bear hug on him, wearing him down, like keeps it on for quite a while. Carlos's arm drops twice, but then he fights back. Um, but then after he's fighting back with some shots, Warlord's back in control. Uh, Warlord just keeps on him. Um, and then he puts the bear hug back on. And then the fucking... He, Carlos gives him the old bell ringer around the side of the head. Um, breaks it again. Headlock by Carlos now after he's broke it. And he does like the low blow from the headlock position. So he's got him in the head, but then swings his foot back. And, like, catches him in the knackers. Warlord's selling that. Um, I quite, like, we're leading up to the finish now. And the finish was, like, it's it's kind of, it's good the way it flowed and it goes. But, like, the last thing just kind of confused me a bit. So, basically, after the low blow from Carlos, he's um, fucking showing great fire by fighting back. He's got Warlord at the ropes. He whips Warlord, but Warlord switches it. As Carlos comes back, Warlord throws the line. As he throws the line, Carlos ducks it, puts the sleeper hold on. So he's got the sleeper on. Um, there's a manager with um, Warlord. I don't know who it is, though. He's just at ringside with him. But um, anyway, as Carlos has got the sleeper on Warlord, the manager's up on the apron. Carlos releases uh, Warlord, goes over to the manager. As he's at the manager, Warlord fucking sneaks up behind Carlos, you know. Fucking Warlord's back in control because of the distraction from the manager. Now, Warlord's got the full Nelson on. Now, this is the finish, right? Now, obviously, the full Nelson is Warlord's finish. So he's got the fucking full Nelson on Carlos. Now, maybe I'm not fucking logically thinking here, but to me, like... The, the, the match is won. Like, Warlord's got his finish on. The manager there is, should be like, fucking right, yeah, my man's fucking winning. But but then the manager comes in. He's got a cane with him. He fucking runs with the cane to nail Carlos. Carlos swings around, and he ends up nailing Warlord. And then, like, Warlord fucking is down. And then fucking Carlos nails the manager and then jumps onto Warlord with like a flying headbutt, boom, as they're standing. They're both standing up, but just a flying headbutt. Warlord's down, one, two, three, and that's the finish. But like my way of thinking is, why the fuck was the manager even there, like getting involved? Like the match is won. Warlord's got his finish on. Carlos is fucked. It didn't make no sense to me for the manager to run in and try to nail Carlos when he's fucking... Yeah. He, he, if, if the Warlord had jumped him after Carlos had had him and said, cop hold of you, Cop hold of Carlos, done the fucking clock in the, you know, roll up, I would have done, or a fucking head butt after that, whatever. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there was too much in it, wasn't there? Yeah, like he just needed, to, like he just needed to hold him or something. If he's got him and he's like, calls him in with the cane, that would make more sense. It was a minute too much there, wasn't it? With, uh, all that without the fucking full Nelson, bowing. It was but, perfect, like, the, yeah. I mean, the, that full Nelson has beaten. Some of the biggest fuckers in the world, right? And now it's put on Carlos Colon, who's a foot shorter than the Warlord, and considerably smaller, and half the strength, and 
if the manager comes in at that point. I mean, the manager needs fucking... The warlord needs to fire the fucking manager. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, to me, it just didn't, like, make sense. Like you say, it would have been a lot better. It would have been a much better finish, I think, if you'd have just held him by his arms. He moved out the way, popped warlord, fuck off the manager. The warlord, you wouldn't even need to do the headbutt because the warlord's been fucking KO'd with a cane fall on him. One, two, three. But yeah, it was a it was a lovely match though. It was just that fucking last few seconds that kind of confused me a bit. But you know, there we go. Um, right, match number two is from 1986, and it's the Invader One versus Kamala. This is um, this is another one from the stadium. Totally different match from the last one. Um, this was like. I enjoyed it. It was okay. And it might have been adding to a story or something. I guess they wanted Kamala to look fucking strong. And they also wanted the invader, who was the face, to, like, not look shit as well. So you'll see, like, they go straight at it. Fucking boom, boom. It's all fucking strikes. Literally strikes. Everything in this match is strikes. Back and forth a bit till Kamala takes control. Fucking, he's got invader against the ropes. And fucking invaders busted open, like, early on. Like, fucking... Blood everywhere, like fucking. As the ma- a masked man bleeding, fucking blows my mind. Well, that I was going to say here that that was, literally was my fucking next point because the Invader One's not got a mask on here. Oh, okay. But um, I know what you're saying because that confused the fuck out of me. I was expecting him to come in a mask, but he wasn't in a mask. So I don't know. This was '86, so I don't know if he'd lost the mask previously or he was yet to wear the mask. I've not, I'm not very familiar with this stuff, so I don't, I couldn't tell you, but um, yeah, I was very shocked. He was I over, mean, though. I mean, on mine, there was Invader 1 and Invader 3. Uh, you know, I don't know who's doing what's what, so uh, yeah, I mean, what what Invader did the fucking Brody murder? Which number was he? I always thought that was one, but I don't know. I, I I'm not really familiar with them, like, but yeah, I also thought it was one. If it was one, he's got some fucking balls to stick around, doesn't he? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Mine, mine was eighty. Uh, mine was ninety-one. And that was in eighty-eight. So three years after, and he's there, fucking happy as Larry, being the state patrol. Fucking hell. <laughs> I mean, that's if it is him. You know, don't sue me, invader. But I'm not saying it was you. I'm just. So it could be another invader. Could be, I don't know. Nothing was proven, was it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he's busted open, all strikes, invaders down. Kamala just keeps giving him them chops to the head. Boom, boom. Mm. Beating the absolute fuck out of him now. There's literally, apart from the very start when it was back and forth exchanging blows, nothing from the invader. Literally, the match is a fucking... Invader tries to fight back, but... Ain't, Nothing's happening. Kamala just keeps gaining control. Literally all strikes by Kamala. And at this point, there was blood, literally. I didn't even see, like, where the blood came from. Like, there was no weapons or anything. It was just literally beating the foot. And I guess it was making Kamala look fucking like a beast. And um, the will, like, with Invader, it was making him look fucking like that just not giving up type, you know, face. Um, And eventually... There's fucking, I'm thinking, I'm waiting for the invader to fucking somehow come back. But eventually there's literally blood just everywhere and the referee just stops it, like, because of the thing. So, like, it was an all right match. I enjoyed it for the sense that I think they might have built to something or they just wanted Kamala to look like a fucking animal and, you know, without making invader look weak. So I guess it was the best fucking call there and then, like, you know, because if invader was a big name, popular face they're not going to want him to job out even if they're making Kamala yeah. look if the referee stops it and he, uh, he you know he didn't say to stop it he's still strong isn't he yeah I mean, he was ready to battle and it was taken away from him so yeah everybody wins in that situation yeah and um th- there was points in the match as well where he was asking Invader if he was giving up, but he was like, nah, and kept fighting back, so it was making himself look fucking like a hero, you know, trying to you know, but um, yeah, it was alright though, it was an okay match, I thought, it was very one-sided, all one-sided, basically but it wasn't like a squash match as such because he was just fucking 
the hero trying to fight back that it never really came. But yeah, it was all right though. I didn't, you know, I didn't mind it. The third match, the third and final match is a uh, Scott Hall versus Tito Carrion. Oh no. Nah, this was a short one. This was the shortest of the lot. This was like three minutes or something. Basically, this was a squash. Scott Hall was just the fucking, you know, he was a big guy. And this guy, I guess, he's they just... 91. Uh, 91. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they start with Scott. Scott Hall gives him a push down from the tie-up. Tie-up again. They get into the corner where Scott Hall's got him in the corner. Scott throws a punch, but he ducks out the corner. Tito nails him a few times, and that's the only fucking thing he gets. He nails him, but Scott starts no-selling. And then he fucking lifts Tito up by the throat the way uh, they did in the last match, or in the first match. But he just throws him down, and Tito takes a massive back bump. Boom. Fucking destroyed him. Uh, Fucking Scott's all on him. Scott is literally just battering him now, then gives him a fall-away slam. Boom. Then he sets him up for the razor's edge, which he used fucking... This was, what, a year or two before he even became razor, so he was still using that fucking... He, he did it. Was he, um, was he a Magnum look here, or was he... Yeah. Magnum. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, by the end of 91, I mean, Halloween Havoc 91, Diamond Stud was on it. So we're not far off, you know... You couldn't have been far off him going right. to the studio again. He'd already been there, you know, 89 kind of time, wasn't he? As the Magnum gimmick. And then he came back as Diamond Stud. So we couldn't have been far off him going there. Mm. But yeah, then uh, there, that was the finish. It was a squash match. So all three matches, very different. Very, uh, They're all decent in their own way. But I absolutely loved the first match. It was just the finish I wasn't happy with. But yeah. I can't really fault any of them, to be honest. But like I say, all different matches. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, like like I said, it makes me sound like a hypocrite. But I always sound like a hypocrite when I like Memphis wrestling. But I don't like hardcore wrestling. But it's just done in such a totally different way. Memphis to, you know, your ECW bullshit. There's a reason for it. And here, there's a reason for the, the blood and guts. Because there's that market for it. And it's not just a, a niche bullshit 30 people in a fucking barn market. It's a stadium full of people market. That, so that's, that stadium is a fucking famous... Um, they, I think they've done all the big shows there. It was, some, uh, it was named after someone famous. I don't know if it's a baseball player or some something. Clem, Clement... I could be talking... I could be sounding right thick or something here, but something Clemente or something stadium... I've heard about it, heard about it, but I just can't remember what. Um, but it was this was like the main fucking building for their shows, I think. So yeah, and uh, yeah, I do. I do like Puerto Rico. I mean, I like the IWA as well that we spoke about at the start. Sort of their other promotion. Um, they used to have TV on the wrestling channel briefly. You know, I've got some tapes of theirs. And uh, yeah, I do like their stuff. Puerto Ricans, yeah, I do. I, it's all good. Uh, yeah, good pick that was, mate. Yeah. Um, so Friday's tag day, and it's my last tag pick uh, with the Armstrong brothers. One match needs to be Brad, one match needs to be Tracy Smothers. The other two do what you want. But an Armstrong has to be an inch match. Monday, your pick of Duke Myers. I know fuck all about Duke Myers, but I've Googled <laughs> him as soon as you said him the other day, and he's done way more than I could ever imagine. Um, primarily tags, by all accounts, in, in reading. Yeah. Um, I think well, he looking... was, um, I think he's one of them fucking dudes that you, not many people know about, but I think he was just a reliable worker. Like, I think if, you know, that's the, the gist I get from him, is just he was just a reliable guy to have there, like, kind of thing, so... Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I'm looking forward to that because it's something that I've not seen, or someone I've not seen. Mm. Wednesday next week today is my territory pick. Um, it's the last one that we're going to do for a bit, because that's the last week um, for a little while. So I've only got one place to go, and that's Smoky Mountain, because that's my favourite territory. I've already done George South, my favourite wrestler, 
I'm doing the Armstrongs and Brad's like right up there on one of my favourite baby faces, Tracy Smothers, because I, I haven't had a chance to do him, so I've built all that into one. So Smoky Mountain is my favourite territory. You know, then I've done a load of me fucking favourites in the last couple of weeks, sort of thing. So yeah, every episode of TV is on uh, on the tube. I haven't seen a bad one. But, you know, I'm quite biased. They're amazing. I fucking love them, I do. Um, and then on Friday, when we do the Armstrongs, you're going to pick your last uh, tag pick. I am, yeah. The world is your oyster. I've already got that one. So like, like next week is the is our last... Our uh, last sort of week. week, yeah. Just for a bit, until, until I know what's happening here, like. Yeah, and yeah. Then, you know, we'll we'll pluck a few out of the air. We'll have a discussion between ourselves and and work out who's picking what, and then we'll we'll fucking we'll chuck one in every now and again. Yeah. Sweet. Armstrong's Friday, Duke Myers Monday. <laughs> I'm really looking for I, 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 because I've seen Smoky Mountain and I've seen the Armstrongs. I, I, you know, I know I'm going to enjoy them, <clears throat> but this Duke Myers thing. I'm looking forward to more because it's new. That's that's what I was going to say. I actually look forward to the ones I've fuck all idea about than yeah. actually the ones I do I do know because you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> like, you know, so. we've, we've seen so many people doing this. We've done this for like what, like a fucking year now, right? Yeah. We've seen so many people that we would never have even dreamt of ever sticking in the YouTube machine purely by accident, really. And uh, yeah, it's, it's proper open some doors to new stuff, isn't it? Bowen, right? Yeah. Armstrong's on Friday. We'll see you then. 